The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. And it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. This is episode 319. The date is November 20th, 2013. Lot to talk about here. Lot to talk about. Look, we've been talking about Obamacare. Obamacare, Obamacare, Obamacare. Can't talk about it enough. The reason why is because I want you to be prepared because the worst is clearly yet to come. There's no question. It's coming right at you. And like I say, you need to be prepared. The same way that I urge you to be prepared with with food. Have food in your house. That's why I didn't just choose legacyfoodspreparewise.com just because uh, you know they're a sponsor and they pay me money I own legacy foods okay I've got for one person almost a year's supply but I'm counting on having two people in the house you need to have food okay go get their mega pack it's about 183 meals $280 all right, use the discount code LUTZ. It'll cost you even less. They got some they got some gifts for you. Just because there was no hurricane in New York this year, just because there was no hurricane in Florida this year, hurricane season is over. Don't kid yourself that there isn't going to be another disaster. You saw tremendous tornadoes take place in the Midwest last week. Disasters happening. Disasters are just part of life. And the big disaster hasn't happened yet, but you can be certain that it's going to happen. No question about it. Okay, It's just a part of life. So go to preparewise.com, type in the code LUTZ. They got a special discount for you. They might even have free shipping, free gift. Just go there. You know, in addition, don't forget to have water on hand, at least 10 gallons for the house, more if you can swing it. You need to have water. You need to have survival tools. Some of that is uh, pry bars, things like that. Uh, Defense items, without getting too uh, vivid in the description, you know what survival tools are. You know, you can go to a whole bunch of different sites and find it. You can also go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com Get the free uh, report. Just sign up for the subscription. Get the report, and that will uh, give you a list of items that you need to get. Stock up on any medications, etc. Uh, not the purpose of this triple Lutz report. That is getting prepared for your health insurance. And one of the smartest guys I know on the subject, we're going to have him back on, is Jim Skinner, smartpatientacademy.com. Jim uh, saw this thing coming. You know, Jim, uh, unfortunately, had gotten brain cancer, luckily beat it, but he was selling insurance for many years, and then he got to see the system from the other side being a patient. Not an easy thing to go through by any stretch. And fortunately for Jim, he had the right insurance, and now he's all about helping you get the right insurance. Also, We don't get anything from Jim. He's just a good friend, and I believe in what he's doing. That's why I recommend him. And look, Obamacare is bad now, but I would call Obamacare the Woodstock of the Tea Party. Uh, If you remember Woodstock for the flower child generation, the hippies, Woodstock was the ultimate party. You know, everybody discovered LSD, heightened states of awareness, all that stuff. Woodstock was an epic event. Woodstock was the beginning, and some could say the end, and I don't think it's the end for the Tea Party, but it led to a movement of art, of culture, 
some would say the downfall of American culture, and I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, Anti-social behavior, free love, and a lowering of standards of public behavior and morality. I'm not going to pass judgment on it because perhaps there were some good things that came of it, but this whole thing of just giving people money, uh, the narcissism of the baby boomer generation of which I'm one, all of that kind of burst onto the scene during Woodstock. I mean, if you, if you haven't really gotten familiar with what Woodstock was about, I highly recommend the movie Woodstock and Woodstock 2. Uh, don't show it when the kiddies are around. A lot of uh, nudity and sex, public sex taking place. But it really kind of captured the whole essence. And then the summer of love where basically millions of people were doing LSD. Not to dwell on it, but Obamacare is kind of crystallizing the Tea Party, focusing them, and has become uh, emblematic of everything that the Tea Party opposes about big government, about loss of personal freedom, and all of these things that are going wrong in America. And healthcare.gov, it's just amazing. The bad news come, continues to come every day. Now it turns out they didn't even finish programming the freaking site. The site wasn't even finished. The bill payment section, which you would think if you're selling insurance through a website, you might want to have the capability of accepting payments through your site. How else do you sell insurance if you can't accept payments? I mean, this is lunacy. And that includes the subsidy calculator, because depending upon your income, and I won't get into the specific dollar amounts, uh, you will be entitled to subsidies. And the subsidies get calculated through interacting with the various government databases out there, including the IRS database, uh, Homeland Security, the VA, the Peace Corps, which I don't understand why. And I read also that Experian is involved in that process as well. They're the ones that, uh, that run credit reports and help, help verify identity. They provide many services, credit scoring. They didn't create FICO, that's Fair Isaacs, but they have their own proprietary credit scoring system out there. Why Experian got the contract, I don't know. There's so much wrapped up in this enigma of healthcare.gov and Obamacare that we can't even begin to know. Supposedly an off officer of CGI was Lady Michelle Obama's Princeton buddy in some uh, African-American organization at Princeton, I, I don't know what the heck is going on with this. It's something stinks about the whole process. Something stinks about the whole program. But look, Obama gets on his news conference, uh, which, man, the guy looked like he was just totally sedated when he was on there. He was barely coherent. And he finally said, well, you know, if you want to keep your health insurance plan, well, I really lied about it when I said you could, but now I'm going to fix it so you can if the insurance company lets you do it and your state insurance commissioner will let you keep your plan, I'll let you keep it because I won't prosecute the insurance companies for letting you keep your health insurance plan. But, you know, you can't just do this because Obamacare is set to take effect on January 1, 2014. And look, Insurance companies don't just come up with these plans and say, oh, we'll just charge a price here and let's see what it comes out to. Especially now because insurance companies aren't allowed to keep more than 15% of the premium dollar that they receive because under Obamacare, that's the maximum profit margin that they're allowed to retain. I shouldn't call it profit margin. That's the gross operating margin because every dollar that they receive under Obamacare, 85 cents have to go to the hospitals, the doctors, and healthcare, and all that stuff. 15 cents of each dollar 
that they retain goes to pay for their cost of operations, all that stuff. So, you know, they don't just come up with these costs. They have to figure out how much all these procedures are going to cost. Therefore, they can't go back in time and say, all right, well, the old policies are good and we'll just keep them going. They have to get rid of them at this point because they can't just say, all right, the president said we can keep those policies going. Maybe they can extend them for another month or two. The other number that keeps coming up is that it's only 5% of the people being covered. And this is not accurate because of these private insurance policies for individuals, each policy has on an average of two, two and a half people. So if there's 5 million policies out there, it probably translates into 12 and a half million people being covered. But look, this isn't the bad news. The bad news is that as of um, December 31st, 2014, another time bomb goes off. And that is that the group plans, small group plans, which covers something like around 80 million people, all right? And these are small businesses with fewer than 50 employees, and they buy in the small group market. And they were able to exploit a loophole in Obamacare for one year. Um, they're over at the end of 2014. And in October of 2014, the cancellation notices go out. And look, that's why I'm saying this is the Woodstock of the Tea Party. This is the Donnybrook of liberalism because, you know, it just reminds me of a story of my brother and I. When we were kids, he was, uh, he's eight years older than me. So I was about six, he's about 14. And behind our uh, house, there was some construction going on and there's a, an old, you know, galvanized steel garbage can and there's a bee's nest in there and he thinks it's a great idea to go throw rocks at that garbage can. So we're about 25 feet away. I can't even reach it. He's bigger and stronger than me, takes a big rock, throws it, throws a couple misses. Finally, he hits it and all of a sudden, the whole nest of bees flies out and comes right after us. Now, luckily, I was a faster runner than my brother, and they're just coming right at us. We start running like crazy, and I'm faster than him. I'm like 10 feet ahead of him. He gets stung by two or three bees. He was lucky he didn't get killed, and we learned a valuable lesson that day, which is like, if those bees are minding their own business and they're happy... Don't go throwing stones at them and piss them off and get them to fly after you because you might get killed. Obviously, the modern-day Republican Party has never learned that. Uh, I should say the Democratic Party has never learned that. We're going to talk more about that up next on the FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. I'm Kerry Lutz, Triple Lutz Report 319. Hi, it's Kerry Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals that you can hold in your hand tax-free, there's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620. 855-678-6620. That's 855-678-6620. Or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did. And tell them Kerry sent you. So we're back. I'm Kerry Lutz on the Financial Survival Network.com. Triple Lutz Report 319. So the point is, if you want to like get 100 125 million people upset. Go mess with their health care. Go mess with your 
health care insurance. Go make them find new doctors. Go make them scrounge for new health insurance policies. Go make them start trying to find, uh, you know, go make them work on a uh, on a web site that doesn't work to go get subsidies that they can't get. And you see how that works. Man, this is going to be unbelievable. And remember, six weeks ago, I talked about about Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, and the brave Republicans who shut down the government. Nobody remembers that the government was shut down six weeks ago. Nobody cares about that. They do remember Ted Cruz and Mike Lee saying, you know, we got to get rid of this Obamacare. It's the worst thing in the world. It's going to kill people. It's going to create untold damage. Remember, I said one man with courage is a majority. That was said by the founder of the Democratic Party, none other than Thomas Jefferson. Remember the evolution of the parties. Jefferson started that Democratic Republican Party way back in the late 1700s. You had the Federalist Party. The modern Republican Party, or what we call the Republican Party today, didn't start until Lincoln, and it was an ad hoc party created to end slavery. It's kind of uh, outlived its usefulness, don't you think? Time to get rid of these parties. But look, Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, all they got to do is, and they're doing it now, saying this is what we were trying to warn you about, America. We were trying to prevent this debacle from occurring. And we're sorry we failed. We tried our hardest. You need to vote out every single Republican and every single Democrat. They created this. And with 120 million upset people, shouldn't be too hard. And look, let's go back to healthcare.gov. They can't fix it. Now they're looking at letting the insurance companies calculate the subsidies. And the insurance companies really have little choice but to embrace Obamacare. They don't have a big choice here because they're in the business of selling insurance. And better to have one standard nationwide because Really, the big insurance companies want one standard because they want to put the little insurance companies out of business, right? It's just like meatpacking. It's just like the FCC. It's just like the FAA. When you get the federal government to go in and regulate and make one rule for everybody, it gets written by the big guys with the sole intention of putting the little guys out of business. That's what's happening in the financial sector now, right? Five banks dominate the whole financial industry. They dominate the brokerage industry. They dominate the banking industry. They dominate everything. Same with the meatpacking business. Same with the airline business. The healthcare insurers want this, even though they know that Obama's intention is to get rid of them and have Medicare for all. They feel that he'll be gone and they'll be able to put the brakes on this. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. I think it's like Winston Churchill said, when you appease, you wind up hoping that the alligator or the crocodile is going to eat your neighbor first and hopefully be happy enough or maybe he'll choke on your neighbor and die before he gets to you. I wouldn't count on it. But that's what we're dealing with here. That's what these guys are about. And, you know, I saw a great, it's just wonderful when you start seeing things like this occur in USA Today. Glenn Harlan Reynolds wrote this, uh, wrote this editorial and he says, Obamacare flopped, but at least fracking works. So two of my favorite themes, you know, I love fracking. You know that I love the energy business. The energy business is just such a great business because while well, it's dominated by the major players, you keep getting new in innovations, new technology, and you keep getting new big players threatening the old ones like Exxon, like Royal Dutch Shell, like Chevron, all the big players. But it, it's always changing. And this guy makes a great point. He says he's written before, there are two Americas, but it's not the rich and the poor. It's 
the one that works pr- produces value and overcomes problems and the one that for the most part doesn't work consumes wealth and produces more problems than it solves i mean i think that's beautiful and i think it really sums up the problems that you're living through now and the america that doesn't work was very much in evidence the past week, the past month, I'd say since FDR. And uh, the Obamacare rollout continued to be in in Democratic Senator Max, Max uh, Bacchus's memorable phrase, a train wreck. And even the New Republic can't get away from that. Uh, this guy, John Judas, observed that the Obamacare fiasco should make fans of activist government angry because it will damage big government's brand for decades to come. Well, look, if you haven't figured out that big government doesn't work by now, you've got your head in a very dark place where I won't go into detail about it. But as he said, it's a big bummer. And then again, if you really think so highly of politicians, you have more serious problems than that. But Well, the biggest government project in a generation was stinking up the place last week. The America that works was doing much better. And although energy independence has been an official government policy, you know it and I know it, for four decades, we're on the way to achieving that more in spite of than because of the federal government. And let me tell you something. Dr. Frack is on his way back. Dr. Frackenstein from North Dakota What he's informed me of is that all you naysayers about fracking, well depletion, and all that, uh, they've developed a way to get 30% more oil out of these fracked wells than they've been getting up to date. So what do you say about that? Jason, I know you don't know about this. Shout out to Jason Burak. He's a good friend. I like Jason a lot. If you're not out there in the fields, working the wells, pumping the oil, or at Schlumberger, or at Halliburton, it's really difficult to keep up with the technology. So Obama is like trying to take credit for America becoming the world's largest energy producer. And, you know, it's it's so absurd because the guy has done everything he could to put the brakes on it because... He wants us to rely on the wind and solar and maybe bicycle energy because he's a big bike rider when he's out on Martha's Vineyard. And look, I mean, if he really cared about it, he'd approve all these pipelines, but he's been fighting and limiting drilling on federal land. And you know, he's done everything he could to stop it. And look, uh, there's a book that they refer to by Wall Street Journal reporter Gregory Zuckerman, we're going to try to get him on the show. Uh, The book is called The Frackers, The Outrageous Inside Story of the New Billionaire Wildcatters. Uh, And looks like a great book. It all comes down to horizontal drilling, that's where you drill sideways, and hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Really, the two working together is what it's about. And... This wasn't something that was developed by big oil. It was developed by a bunch of outsiders, wildcatters, this guy Mitchell, who really was the one who started it all. And natural gas is really the key to all this. If we had the Keystone Pipeline, they wouldn't be flaring off so much gas in North Dakota. One interesting thing that's happening is there's a huge lawsuit in North Dakota where the uh, landowners are suing the oil companies who've leased the mineral rights from them because the oil companies are flaring off the natural gas and the landowners are saying, hey, wait a second, guys, uh, you're flaring that off, but you should be paying us royalties on this. And uh, the rumor has it that over a billion dollars is going to have to be paid by those oil companies to the landholders, which is one of the reasons why the big frackers up in the Dakotas will be uh, cutting back uh, or are cutting back on employment. So anyway, thanks to the fracking revolution, a lot more electricity is being produced 
by burning natural gas, so the air is cleaner, cheaper gas. The petrostate uh, dictatorships have got much less influence and pull. And guess what? This has happened not as a result of uh, big government, but as a result of individuals staking their lives and fortunes on a risky venture, you know, capitalism. That's what it's come down to. Not, not government programs, not subsidies. And this is what, what it's all about. This is what made America great. That's the America that works based on entrepreneurship, risk, responsibility. It's worked for hundreds of years. America invented it. I wouldn't say we invented it. We took the English model, and as usual, we improved upon it, and it worked. So that's what it comes down to, these two Americas, right? One is government, and I throw Wall Street in there too, because Wall Street couldn't exist in its current shape or form without the government. And Wall Street plus Washington equals America that doesn't work. And then we have entrepreneurs pursuing their own interest, and that's what makes America great. Up next on the Financial Survival Network, we're going to be talking about drones in the skies of America and a lot more on financialsurvivalnetwork.com, 1230 WBZT, Triple Let's Report, episode 319. What happens if the collapse never really comes? You need income, and Jason Hartman can help you get it. He's helped thousands of people realize their dreams of financial independence through real estate investing, and now he's got an unbeatable offer for you. He's offering my ebook, Forget Wall Street, Go for the Gold and Silver 2, for free. Just visit jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. The first 100 Financial Survival Network listeners will get the book free. Remember, you can't afford to put all your eggs in one basket. Real estate should be part of a balanced investment portfolio along with gold and silver. Just go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and sign up today. When it comes to real estate investing, Jason Hartman is the only person we trust on the Financial Survival Network. So make your money work as hard as you do by building an income property empire. Real estate is America's proven investment. Go to www.jasonhartman.com slash Lutz and get your free ebook today. That's Jason, H-A-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. That's Jason, H-A-R-T-M-A-N dot com slash Lutz. Jason knows how to help you retire with a portfolio of income producing property. Go to jasonhartman.com slash Lutz. And we are back on the financial survival network.com. And there's a big drone plan in the United States, according to space daily uh, from last week, 7,500 commercial drones within the next five years. I don't know if they're commercial or military, what the deal is, but supposedly it's for the war on terrorism to collect survey and weather data, assist rescues and law enforcement operations. Isn't this a great world? Um, This guy, Michael Toscano, he's president and CEO of the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems. So thank you very much, Mr. Toscano. You're going to be there helping to take away our freedoms Uh, I'd like to know your background, what you used to do, uh, what the heck is going on here. Supposedly, uh, the commercial drone industry will create 100,000 jobs and generate more than $82 billion over the next 10 years. So I guess the government's going to outsource our our servitude and having our rights taken away. They're just going to be part of the, the military intelligence industrial system infrastructure in the country and they talked to a guy named christopher calabresi of the aclu and uh 
you know, he said that while the FAA's requirement for public disclosure of data and retention policies are needed and welcome, of course, the safeguards do not go far enough and that it's crucial that as we move forward with drone use, these protections are followed by concrete restrictions on how data from drones can be used, how long it can be stored. You know, they can see through your walls. They can monitor all your data, everything about you. And, you know, people are worried about drone use. And when you start seeing it in a huge number of state bills and laws, the FAA needs to understand if they don't address these issues, then drones are not going to be a useful technology. And, you know, look, it's just part of the surveillance state. Um, you know, be on the lookout because this is bad news for you, for your family, for your kids. What kind of freaking world are we live are we leaving for our kids here? I mean, I don't want these things hovering over me, my life, my world. I just don't want them there, and I'm tired of this. I really am, and it's time to put a stop to this. We don't need them here except in very limited, limited areas, maybe on the border, maybe on the borders, maybe monitoring incoming shipping, maybe. But there, there needs to be a real discussion of this and real strict limitations imposed on how this is going to happen. All right, let's start let's start really having a debate on this stuff and not just let the government have its way with us like they do all too often. Oh, and here we are. Like, you have to look at this one because as it comes out now, and John Crudell of the New York Post, he's one of my favorite financial writers. Okay, if you haven't read anything by him, go over to the New York Post just comes out today that the Census Bureau faked 2012 election jobs report. Okay? So the decline um, was from 8.1% in August to 7.8% in September. And I knew it was garbage because I haven't believed any of the jobs reports for years. Known they're garbage. And I hope you haven't either. If you've been listening to this show and to others like it, like the SGT report and Brother John F., you know that it's garbage. You just know none of it is true. And they caught this guy, Julius Buckman, faking the results of these surveys. And uh, Crudell said that Buckman told him in an interview that he was told to make up information by higher-ups. And they have very demanding standards. It's like my friend Charles Biderman says they could be checking the employment numbers in real time. They don't need these surveys, but they like these surveys because it allows them to manipulate the data. And supposedly the jobless numbers at 7.3%, but the reality is it's probably triple that. And all these numbers do is allow the government to put, put across propaganda and you know, in one document from the probe, program coordinator Joel Crosby was in 2010 asked, why was the suspected possible data fal falsification on the survey uh, work, uh, which was suspected not investigated by the region and uh, is unable to determine why the investigation wasn't done? You know, it's just a bunch of garbage. When you read these numbers... Don't believe them, okay? None of what the government tells you has any credibility whatsoever. Follow the money. The entire government structure, the entire government infrastructure, the only reason it existed and it exists is to further the interest of the, of the elite. That's it. It has no other purpose. Okay? And in this case, the elites wanted the administration to be reelected. That was the only purpose it served. Period. I hope you understand that. And the next time you see a number, do not believe it. Okay? And 
The problem with statistics is even when they're not faked, they can still be wildly inaccurate. Even when the survey people go out with the best, the best of intentions, all right, even when they're totally pure as the driven snow, they can still, still come out totally inaccurate. Because if you ask the wrong questions, you get the wrong answers. And who knows if you're asking the right questions. Don't even pay attention to these surveys. They usually mean nothing. Okay? Unless you're asking the questions, don't even listen. And it's just what it comes down to, really. So we got this guy, uh, Rob Ford. He's the mayor of of Toronto, and we talked about him with uh, <laughs> with our old friend uh, Danielle Park. And look, I mean, this, this guy is out of control, and it just shows you like how screwed up Canada is when they don't even have a mechanism in place to remove a guy who is an admitted crackhead and, you know, has no morals and is just out of control. I mean, even in the United States, Marion Barry, they got rid of this guy when, when he was caught on tape doing crack and, you know, all the bad things he's been doing. So, look, I mean, Canada's out of control. I mean, they need to do something to rewrite their constitution because they are really going down the drain here. And this guy is just unbelievable. And what does it say when this guy is still there? I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, he, he controls billions of dollars. They're taking his duties away from him. The con... Can't the queen step in? I mean, God save the queen here. Can't the queen step in? She still runs Canada. Let's face the facts. I mean, they had a an attempted coup by the liberals, the Labour Party in Canada. She stepped in and dissolved Parliament. Come on, Queen Elizabeth. Can you get rid of this guy? He is a disgrace to Western civilization. It just shows how much, how much, how low we have fallen. I mean, I can't even believe it. What is going on here? Where are we headed when this happens? It's just shocking, although I must say, as a seasoned cynic and observer of culture and everything else that's happening, I can't even believe it at this point. I'm just shocked. But that's a relative term. I'm shocked that that there's no mechanism, no legal mechanism to remove a guy that it's like he's the Charlie Sheen of of Canada. I mean, he's a joke, a laughing stock. So how do you keep this guy on? I I just don't see it. Am I missing something? If I'm missing something, write me, Kerry Lutz, K H L at Kerry Lutz dot com, K H L at K E R R Y L U T Z. Dot com. If you write something real witty, I'll publish it, and uh, I'll have you on the show. I'd love to interview you. If you got anything you want to contribute, if you'd like me to interview you, you got an interesting take on any issue that's going on now, just write me, khl at kerrylutz.com. It's been another Triple Lutz Report. Kerry Lutz, signing off. Our friend Tom Dyson at the Palm Beach Letter is giving away free copies of a really cool report he put together called How to Protect Yourself from America's New Secret Police. Inside, you'll learn all sorts of simple, everyday tricks you can use to make yourself a little less visible and vulnerable to scammers, hackers, and even the federal government. For instance, inside Tom's report, you'll learn which free internet email service never to use This company doesn't care if your account gets hacked or not, or things the government must tell you if they request your social security number, and how to spot skimmers lying in wait on ATMs and gas pumps, and much, much more. 
These tricks and secrets are low-hanging fruit ideas. You don't have to invest time or much money into them. Most are free. But by taking some basic measures, you can make your privacy much harder to invade than your neighbors. Tom's report is available for a limited time to listeners who take a trial subscription to his newsletter. Just visit the Financial Survival Network homepage for more information or go to www.palmbeachletter2.com. That's www.palmbeachletter2.com. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. 